Alright, let me know when it when the when it starts recording. And we are live. Hey fisherman, Aqua Duelist here, and I'm also here with my editor. Hello everyone. And uh today we're doing episode two of the podcast. So uh basically it's you know, something new that we just kinda started where it's it's just kind of you know like a, like a, a hangout podcast kind you know podcast type of thing where uh, basically we start off talking about something Yu-Gi-Oh related and it just kind of goes wherever and uh, today we're just we're gonna be talking about some of our uh, favorite cards that you know aren't really relevant because uh, we've been playing this game for way too long especially me I'm not gonna lie. I remember my first set being the set that had Cloudians and trying to build Cloudians. And this is like when I didn't read the cards because I just copied what I saw in GX. <laughs> so you can imagine how that went to where I actually met people who read the cards. I didn't even think about it. I'm like, ah, I got this. Trust me. Jaden knew what he was doing. <laughs> Um, oh man, I, it feels weird because I'm just over here, like, I feel so old, um, especially for some, this car I'm about to mention, uh, do you, do you, do you know the card Total Defense Shogun? I mean, I hope so, I've sold it before. Um, so, uh, I actually have one of those graded. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, um, I actually, uh, you remember those, um... Really shitty, uh, what was it? The um, like mystery box things you can get at Walmart. Don't mention those here, that might change our pop ups. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, Marcus uh, bought one and he pulled a graded total defense shogun and gave it to me. It costs like 10 bucks to get them graded. Why couldn't they just put a good card in it? I mean, it, it it was a good card at one point. Oh yes. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I I, I remember back in the day when uh, I played that, and um, you know, the fact that it just it was in defense position. I mean, you know, kind of kind of stopped a decent amount of things. One of the few cards you can tribute set. Well, I mean, the thing is, you know, it was, it's it's the fact that when the card goes face up, it just it automatically goes in defense position, and it attacks while in defense position. Like, I thought that was just so cool back in the day. Um, let's see. So, I mean, not only that, too, but, I mean, that kind of... I feel like if we didn't have that card, we... Pro, you know, if that card wasn't made, we probably wouldn't have super heavy Sams. Let's let's be real here. Yeah, there's a lot of cards that attack from defense, but after total defense Shogun, I know like um, what's it called? Um, whatever the GX fusions, it's like burst center tricks and clay man fuse can attack from defense position. Oh, um, um, it was like Rampart Blast, or no? I think it was like Rampart Blaster. I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, stone tits, yes. Yeah, we yeah, there's like a few cards. Yeah, there's like you're saying there's like a few cards that are basically, you know, same thing. Um but yeah, like I always just kind of thought that that was like the coolest thing and then the fact that it had 200 it had 2250 defense specifically um uh, I just felt like a dick playing that card because you know, it's just like I mean, people are playing, you know, stuff like, uh, what was it, uh, S Summon Skull, and then, you know, another favorite I had was Cybertech Alligator. Um, that thing, I, I, I still think that card just has awesome artwork. Yeah, hopefully it gets, like, a retrain or something in the future. They've been doing, like, a lot of really random old cards, getting archetypes or just retrains. I, I, I would love to see that card get a retrain. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually upset, uh, with... One thing is, uh, I don't know if you remember, uh, Dark, I think it was Dark Fire Warrior number one and Dark Fire Warrior number two. Oh, they I'm were two. Familiar. Yeah, those are literally two old vanillas that I really love. And 
I'm actually kind of upset that they never got a fusion or they didn't like they didn't do anything with them. And it's just like I felt like it was a wasted opportunity, especially since, you know, you had like um what was it? Uh not I'm trying to think of uh, I was like M Warrior One and like M Warrior Two and they had a fusion and then you had like um, I think it was like Super Robo Lady and like Super Robo Man. They had like two. They actually had two fusions, and, and it's just like, together. yeah. And it's just like you had cool stuff like that back then, and it's just they didn't get anything. And it's just like it. I it, it sucked. I I I always felt so disappointed. <laughs> Well, like, uh, uh, one of the problems with that is a lot of the cards are, like, you know, this number two or this number one. Um, Some of those just aren't related, and they were just called that for translation purposes. Yeah. Like, I don't know firsthand on this one, but I know that that has happened before. I think, like, Mushroom Man 1 and Mushroom Man 2 are, like, not related at all. Yeah. And then Twin Long Rods and Twin Long Rods 2 and, you know... Which we, which, which I'm just going to say real quick. I think it's, um, I think it's, I can't remember if it's twin long rods one or two. One of them actually doesn't have a TCG release yet. Really? Yeah. So, uh, there you go, guys. We, we threw in a little random Yu-Gi-Oh fact right there. Um, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I know way too much about like old school vanillas and such because, uh, I'm I'm that old, you know, back in the day we vanillas were meta. I'm I'm that fucking old at this, you know, just been playing this game for that long. Uh Wait, shut up. We're <laughs> the same age. No, I'm like older than you. You see back in my years, this was post Columbian wartime era. This is definitely pre Great Depression. What we would do is we would normal summon a vanilla and set one in pass. But the reason you set one is because they had a card called Heavy Storm. And if you set all five, they could remove all five. So you had to be careful what you did and didn't set. That's how you sound. You know, that, the sad part is, is this joke actually has some truth to it. That's how you sound, Casey. Keep that in mind. Is that really how I sound? No, that's how I sound at work. I make that joke all the time to the young people. I don't believe that. <laughs> so what I do at work, um, so this is for anyone knows, I work with like hospitality and stuff. Um, typically with clients, you don't see more than one in like a month, right? The same one. So I'll yeah. have a set amount of jokes for the month and my staff has to deal with it and the clients can't tell a thing. So they think it's hilarious as shit. So every mm-hmm. month or so I swap out a different back in my day joke. You know, like back in my younger years, this was, uh, I think about it, it's, it's, this was definitely post Columbian wartime era, but this was definitely pre Great Depression. What we would do is we would drill holes in people's heads, and that way we would release the demons. And these kids these days are spoiled with their medication and their shots. What we would do is we just cut a hole in their head, no anesthesia or nothing, and shit was right as rain. And these spoiled fuckers want to complain about needles today. Jeez. And the funniest part about that is that is a real medical procedure they do. And they do it to this day. Jeez. They find skulls but... like that where people, like, have healed. So, like, not only did people survive after the surgery, they dealt with it for the rest of their life. So, yeah, um, throwing this out there, guys, there's a lot of just really old random vanillas that I kind of just, I just like. So... Now y'all know why when y'all see me do, like, discussion videos on retrains of random cards and I'm over here, like, flipping out, trying not to, like, scream and squeal and crap. Um, now y'all know why, because I'm some old-ass fat motherfucker who plays Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> that game just, being, just being honest, guys, like... Plus, you know, we got we got to throw in like a, a few cuss words to keep us safe from the clutches of Kappa. Still, <laughs> they changed the rules of but... that again, but that won't affect us much. Oh, really? Yeah, YouTube changed their rules about cursing, but um, I'll figure that out when we get there. You know. All right. Well, 
That's that's cool. Or a Yu-Gi-Oh channel. I don't think we'll be dying anytime soon. You know, fair point there. But uh Oh, you, something something else another car too was uh, Ultimate Baseball Kid. Uh that thing's still an FTK enabler, isn't it? I mean, I I feel like I mean I I don't know. I I feel like it has like this whole time it's it's kind of had potential. It's been more of like an OTK type of thing, but I think with uh I think with that new um that new car I told you about that makes everything fire. I think I think that will basically allow it to finally be like an FTK. Um so yeah, there there's like one video right there I want to do is like on that new car we're getting um not in uh it's not in a photon hypernova it's it's in the next set. Yeah, I'll pull it up on my phone while we're talking so I can tell you what it's called. Just keep going. Yeah, I I, I can't remember the name. It has like a really long, weird like Japanese name. It's so one of those Yu-Gi-Oh names. Yeah. I mean the thing that sucks is uh, I was I was gonna order it on um I was actually gonna order this uh, a Japan uh, place of uh, Japanese um, copies of it and apparently on TCG Republic they're already like it's been b- getting bought up to the point where I can only buy like one at a time and it's like a six dollar common right now. Oh, here I have it. Anato, what, what's the name of it? Anata o Keshite Akira Manai. Or translated in English, never going to give you up. That's that's not what that, that means. That's No, no, no. That's what that means. It's a real name. It's Yukai Narin, uh, Yukai Narin no Kitsube. Oh, wait. Kitsunebi Urara. So I, no, I, I feel. You. I feel like when I, I feel like when it comes time to, for me to do the discussion video on that, I'm gonna butcher that card's name so badly. What you should do is you should try the first time and then just make shit up as you go along. <laughs> you, you know, know you know, not, I'll, it's you kind of not Karibo, you know. <laughs> oh man, you kind but know. yeah. Ooh. So yeah, um, that I, I don't know. Like, I I I think baseball kids always had like insane potential, and I think I think this card's really gonna just like push it. Good stuff. Yeah, this is some really good. This is some really good uh, lime flavored. Like- this thing has more than one way to get to it. There's Infernites, there's Egg Nobles, you know. You, um, there's Ignites. Ignites can literally just pull this. I don't know why you would, but you really could. I, I know at one point, um, back when, like, Ignites were a thing, um, I've seen a few people actually play uh, Ultimate Baseball Kid. Just pen, pen 5 smack Essentially, like that was a thing I remember, but like I can't remember like the time. I can't remember the time of like when Ignites came out. I just remember like uh, I just remember like some people playing Ultimate Baseball Kid. I mean, even but, if it's not like, good, it's still funny. Well, I mean, you know, you just pendulum summon it um, with, you know, your other uh, ignites, and you just you had big beat stick. I mean, what, what, like, honestly, what do ignites really do? They just their their whole thing was they would just pendulum summon for five, and they were just vanillas for the most part. Well, at the moment, they can't do anything account of the fact that their one gimmick was butchered. Oh yeah. Like, um, like out of all of the decks that got hit by the master rule changes, to this day, Metal Foes is still the worst one. Not Metal Foes. Uh, Ignites is still the worst one to get hit. No, 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 no. That's Dino Miss. No, no, no. Dino Miss actually have cards. Ignites have the same card over and over and over again. They don't use any of their other cards except for their monsters, and all of their monsters do the same 
goddamn thing and nothing else. They're all vanillas, they all do the same thing, and they're all just, they're all fire warriors. So there's no fire warriors unless it's them. And that you play the whole game, like, I, I own eight knights, so just this, this to explain this. You play the whole game, you pendulum one, and you pendulum over your hand, and you call it a day. And then you sit there and realize that you shouldn't have bought this deck of vanillas, and you don't know why you did this to yourself, and you could have bought a good deck. Like Dino Mists. You know what? I just gotta say this. I, I feel like I need to, uh, I just need to dick slap you with, uh, with Ignites now. Oh, don't worry, I got this. I'll just play anti-spell fragrance. Motherfucker. Um, Cosmic Cyclone? Um, I play MST, I negate. And, th that's not how that card works. Okay, I play Blizzard, I negate. Okay, now you're actually being... Now Wait. we're cooking with fire. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm gonna be honest though. I still think Dino Miss was like honestly the worst. Like, I think it was a deck that got hit the worst because the fact that like the Pendulum Zones got moved really did screw them over. You know, um, I think I and the fact. Like... But wait, but here's the thing though. It like it screws over their playstyle because They're they want to be controlled. Yeah. They're a back row deck, and it's just like. They're literally going to be, like, their whole thing is they want to have Howling. They want to have one copy of uh, Charge. So it's like you're basically trying to play a back row deck with one back row slot. It doesn't really work. So I actually, I know, I can tell you without a shadow of fact, the deck that, the deck that got hit most by the Master Rule shift for Pendulums. Oh, boy. So this is without a shadow of a doubt. I am right, and I can prove it. You see... Ignites and um, Ignites and Dino Mist weren't exactly playable before the Master Rule. A deck, however, that was for approximately thirty seconds was Counter Fairy, and the reason being is that two of the cards they used were Pendulum Monsters, so they had to put it in the back row now thus ruining their ability to play counter traps appropriately. Now they have to change their entire game plan, roughly, just to get their deck to work. Hey, are you serious? Yeah, um... What's it called? Um... I remember, um... I remember Nick played uh, Counter Fairies for, like, a little bit. Yeah, and him stacking the entire goddamn time. But it's like, honestly, I don't really remember what Counter Fairies really did other than play Counter Traps, and then they got they got pluses off of it. Oh no, the planes are coming. One second. Oh, wait, I don't, my uh, microphone is thing picking it up, so we're good. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, you could, I live by a military base, by the way. But yeah, like, I, I, I just, I don't remember Counter Fairies. Yeah, they are. They're they're garbage. I wouldn't even bother thinking about them, honestly. Um, like I, rem thinking about I remember the was like really essential to what Nick was playing, and it was called Guiding Ariadne. And let me pull it up. I just I just remember like I remember the structure deck, and then like that was it. Guiding Ariane's effect for Pendulum Scales is A, you do not have to pay life points to activate counter traps, and you do not have to discard to activate counter traps. So all your counter traps are basically free, right? Well, jeez. The problem is, is if you played this in a Pendulum Monster that could pop this, because this, if popped, could reveal three counter traps, your opponent chooses one and gives it to you, and you put the rest back in the deck. So you could play, like, extra cards to pop this and then put it back on the field and pop it again later just to get more counter traps. There's an extra strategy there. But now, not only do you have to put this in the back row, ruining your, like, back row, or bo your board in the back so you can't have certain ones, but you also can't use extra pendulum cards unless you want to take up your spots. And they give you a continuous spell in the structure deck. So now if you want to play the continuous spell and this... You can't do that either. Wow. 
they uh, they really did get screwed. Yeah, um, I feel like I'm probably going to return to the comments because I'm not exactly the most familiar playing Counter Fairy, but yeah, that. I mean, like whatever. I, like I said too, I I really don't even know how they play or really remember other than they just. They were fairies, they played counter traps, and they basically got pluses off of it. Um, they are the most unnecessarily uh, unnecessarily oriented control deck, in my opinion. <laughs> it's, it's just like, imagine, it's like playing against side frames where you can see the back row is kind of like the gist of it. Ah. Uh. It's just, it's no, okay, okay, how about, no, okay, no, no, okay. How that or they open so fucking horribly you play right through it and call it a day. I remember, uh, I remember back when I was, uh, back in, o uh, in Ocala, and, uh, when Kirk's, uh, card shop was still, you know, around, he was still alive and such. Um, I remember one week somebody brought in, um, Psy Frames and was just playing, like, straight Psy Frames. You see, that's what so. Well, so I remember, like, basically, if you if you don't do anything, they basically can't play. So, <laughs> so you just I, sat there. <laughs> I literally sat there for four turns, decided to not do anything, and the guy looked at me and he's just like, "Really, you're really gonna do this?" And I'm like, "Well, okay." I'm like, "Well, yeah." I'm like, "If I don't do anything, you can't do anything." And then literally got pissed off and was like, uh, I forget what exactly he said. Um, and then he passes back to me and I'm, um, all I did was I normal summoned a random card and I said no effect and then just proceed to smack him and pass. And I did that until, until he ran out of a life points. You want to say something really funny? Sure. I haven't personally seen this in a while. You ever seen a side frame mirror match? Oh no, I've never seen that. Like, draw, draw, okay, draw, uh, draw, uh, set one, draw, okay, set one, draw, okay, okay. This keeps going. Eventually, the two guys just gave up. They knew exactly what was going on. Wow. I feel like that'd be like one of the most uh, painful games to watch. Yeah. And what's really funny about stuff like that is, is everyone knows Cyframes are annoying, but they're not good. <laughs> well, I guess... I mean, not other, than, other than... um, was it? Um, Omega. Delta. What, what, is it Delta? Gamma. Oh, uh, gamma. Um, and there's like there there's like the one that works with spells that like showed up for like I think two or three formats. I think that actually might have been Delta. I feel I feel like Delta is kind of slept on. Well, the thing I mean, about it's... Cyframes is that they inherently all the cards in Cyframes, honestly, all like every one of them alone is pretty good. Like every one of them could see play theoretically most of them anyways their yeah. synchros are good one of them is broken their hand traps are good one of them is bro one of them is broken like a all their cards are pretty good their traps good their field spells good but the thing is is they don't do anything because yep. it's like it's like playing a trade trying to play a deck of all ash blossoms at some point you might have hit a barrier that you should not be hit pretty much I'm not going to lie, you remember, um, so you remember when, uh, was it, um, Cyframe Omega was at three? Oh my god, do I ever? <laughs> the moment I you was remember... able to own three, I owned three. Do you remember, um, when, do you remember that deck that was going around with Treasure Panda? Yes. And the whole thing, it would basically just play a bunch of spells, then do treasure panda shenanigans. Oh no, Casey, I, got, make, uh, I watched the guy build that on Zodiac. And then it, it just triple Omega, that was some that was some stuff. I watched the guy build that on Zodiac, and that wasn't triple, that was five Omegas. I was 
just saying. He brought that shit back with DDR. He was going hard. That was a that was a fun time. I love uh, and stuff like that because you can just pull the most random shit out of your ass and call it a day. I'm not gonna lie. I miss Trash Panda. That card is so stupid. It's, it's beautiful. It's hilarious. I forget. Is he a beast or this a beast is, warrior? Let me see. I have the I database think, pulled up. I, I think he's a beast. <laughs> it would it would make sense. The UK huh? database sucks ass. It would make sense if he was a beast. Yeah, he's a beast. I... If he were a beast warrior, that'd be much different. Yeah, because then wouldn't you be able to grab him with a uh, fire formation tanky? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, be beasts have a lot of really good, cool support, yeah, so, you beasts. know. Yeah, but, like, I like I remember um that card came out, though. A lot of people were just kind of... A lot of people were just kind of messing around with it, doing random stuff. And then, uh, I... Th um. Mem and then uh, there there was like that Exodia variant that played it. Um, that was pretty freaking cool. Exodia kid played it, so yeah, but he was terrible at it. Oh, dude, that guy constantly. I feel like he constantly changed his builds of Exo his Exodia deck. Like he refused to play anything outside of Exodia. He refused to play anything, trade for anything that wouldn't help Exodia. He refused to trade anything away if it could possibly help Exodia. And yeah. every time he would lose, he would change one card or one or two cards to counter whatever beat him without realizing that that's not how Yu-Gi-Oh works. Pretty much. Like, and he eventually, he will quite literally stop sit talking if you banish an Exodia piece. He'll just go, yep. All joy will leave his face, and he will just stop playing. Yep, pass. Set one, pass. Yep. Pass. It's like, dude, if you're gonna be like that, at least scoop. Oh, no, it was really funny, because the way he plays Yu-Gi-Oh! is the exact way he is in conversations. I remember him getting into religious debates with uh, Rachel and um, Robert. I don't know if you remember him. Robert was, like, a really hard atheist, and Rachel's, you know, Rachel's Christian. And this man was giving both of them the most annoying time because he's uh, like one, like a really heavy like Bible shoved up his ass kind of guy. And he just won't like stop. And they're like, "That's not how that works. Stop saying these words." I I remember him, and honestly, I remember he. I I just remember like he only played Exodia. Like, uh, he keeps, uh, I remember because I was in, I think it was in a class or two of his, he would always try to, like, talk to some of the group, and just the group didn't like him. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, what was, uh, what was that one dude's name who would always, like, buy up car, he'd go around to, like, all the car shops and buy up cards that we were looking for? Um, Graham? Oh, yeah. I'm surprised that, uh, Graham stayed in that group as long as he did. Too. Like, none of us really liked him. And I mean, it's like, dude, are you like, I remember, I remember when I was getting uh, Swap Frogs, he literally was trying to buy up every Swap Frog he could find. And then I remember, uh, I remember coming in to CF and he was telling me how he he bought like I think it was like some it was like a stupid amount like he bought like like seventeen SWAT frogs from uh what was it uh I think like he found it like geek out or something and I was like oh, I was like oh cool he's like yeah he's like yeah that probably sucks doesn't it? he's like you know you you probably need you know I'm like yeah no I already got my three. Well, it's like, you know, it's one thing if you wanted to, like, own the card or collect the card. Like, I collect Cloudy and Smoke Balls, but no one's out here scrambling for Cloudy and FDK or something. But, like, it's another thing entirely to go out and buy cards exclusively so no one can play with them except for you. 
Yeah, and that's honestly what he. That's honestly what he would do. Like if he knew you were looking for a, a like particular card, he would just go and buy. It. He'd just go to car, to local car shops, buy up every coffee he could, just to make it harder for you. Oh, he exclusively went through and traded all of the commons of Raid Raptors out of everyone's bulk. This way, no one can play Raid Raptors. Oh, and then um, you remember how he, we would uh build something, and he would basically always say, "Oh, I already built that." Like this man has built like every deck possible. And then him and the was... argue about something completely irrelevant while the rest of the group had to watch. Oh yeah, that was always kind of funny to me. Like. I don't know. I just, I, I oh oh. By the way, him and uh, from what I heard, him and uh, him and Shane aren't together anymore. Good. That was a that was not a healthy relationship. No, it really wasn't. Um. Shortly after we all kind of left CF, I I heard they uh they split. And I ran into Graham like I think once or twice. And he was literally just working at GameStop. Yeah. I remember people telling me he was a teacher. I'm like, no, he's not. I bought my Switch from him. Yeah, no. By the way, that's what I, I remember. <laughs> I remember when, uh... I remember when I when I saw him when he was working at the GameStop, he was trying to tell me he was a teacher and such. And I was like, well, if that's the case, why are you working here? Like, basically told him, you know, something don't sound right right there, and he got pretty mad about that. <laughs> but, oh man, I miss I miss the college days. I do too. Huh? I said I do too. I mean, it was it was just it was it was fun times. Like we, like. The game was a lot different. You could make you you can make decks that were more or less just kind of out there, like the uh, the trash panda triple omega turbo. You know, you 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 could do stuff like that more freely, and it's just that type of stuff would work. Well, it's does it yes the no to that? I feel like the stuff they make these days it still works. But, like, it's just a lot harder. Like, there are some yeah. really funny, weird-ass combos. Have you heard of Yajiro Invader? Yes, I have. Th those are still playable. Like, almost all of those are still playable. Like, there are plenty of Yajiro Invader decks. Mm. It just, you know, oh. options. Oh, um, you remember uh, that one uh, event where, like, there was that field spell deck that took like i think it was like second place or something and oh, you yeah, were like that's... flipping out about because yeah, the that's... deck basically was like half full of just field spells that would go into engines yes and i was i remember because i was trying to build decks and all of them almost all of them ran like seven field spells and had three terraforming and i watched that and i'm like oh no i was playing like true oh. draco ancient gears which you know, sounds terrible on paper, but trust me, it worked like forty percent, forty percent of the time. Yeah, only know. only forty percent of the time. I mean, hey, if you're dueling against Graham, forty percent turns into ninety pretty fast. <laughs> Just throwing Graham under the bus. Like you know, the guys at CF. I'm not saying this isn't the bad players. They would play bad decks. So if my bad deck went up against their bad deck, my bad deck. Could look better than normal. Yeah, well, fair enough, right there. Like you know, you're you're playing like you know, magician girls or something. Like it's like you're going. The, each deck has a limit, you know. I mean, I wasn't playing magician girls. I wasn't talking about you specifically. I'm not. Oh, not I know. Anybody out? If you guys played them. I I honestly don't even. Wait. A few guys played them? What? I want to say Steven and Kevin did. 
I think I think I remember Kevin playing it. I can't remember if Steven. He might be right. It might be Kevin. <laughs> um, I don't know. I I, I, I know like together. I I just remember I remember somebody playing playing it for a little bit, but I don't remember who. So, but but you know you 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 would never see me. Uh, you never you know you you never catch me playing uh Magician Girls. I mean, I forget what he was playing, but I remember watching Kevin just murder Ron while playing Magician Girls. I couldn't tell you what uh, Ron was playing, but Ron plays like the equivalent of sand in a bucket being poured into a paper shredder, so I don't really know if that counts. I mean, penguins? I mean, maybe. you ever heard of Pot of Generosity? Maybe, maybe penguins? You ever heard of Pot of Generosity? I think I I think I might have uh, Isn't it like the one where it's like the white pot And you shuffle two pots from your hand Back into two cards from your hand into your deck And that's it Wait what You shuffle two cards from your hand Into the deck That's it Did did he play that? Oh, he played that, and he played that. He played that unironically. He said it helped with unbr- it helped unbreak his hands. What? <laughs> <laughs> Hold up! What? Yep. I mean, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I I guess. I guess if you're playing like three drivers and you opened up all three, like maybe. Listen, man, I'm playing Infernity and I can't set these cards. Trust me. <laughs> I forget what he was playing. Wait, wait, wait. Is that really all the card does? Just, just shuffle two cards to your hand back into your deck? Oh, yes. It's called generosity because you're being generous to your opponent. What? There's no way. Yeah, that it, you can look it up. That's a real fucking card. Oh, no. Well, I mean, there, there's a trap card that gives your opponent a second battle phase. Really? Yeah, that... It, it's... It's uh, it's in the same set. I'm pretty sure that Cloudians came out in Gladiator's Assault. I think. I forget the card's name. It's it's a trap. All right, I'm pulling it up now. Oh, this man! This man is on a mission now. He's gonna look for it. I actually just have the the card database pulled up anyway, so I figured I might as well. This man, this man has to see if this card exists. But yeah, it's just, I think it's like a normal trap, if I remember correctly. But yeah, it just, it just gives your opponent a second battle phase. Doesn't make any sense on why it, why it exists. Or why would you do that? But it's an option. Oh, no entry came out in this set. <laughs> We also got uh, Cla- we also got Claudius. An unfortunate report. <laughs> Your opponent conducts their next battle phase twice. <laughs> yep. Why? Why not? Here, I'm gonna tell you a secret. This is this is uh this is, let me see if I can find it. This is one of my favorite cards. Let's see. Oh boy. So, um, uh, it's called Fenrir, right? Wait, 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 wait. Level what Fenrir are we talking about? Fenrir is a level four water beast with fourteen hundred attack and twelve hundred defense. Oh. Oh, we're talking about that Fenrir. When your opponent destroys an opponent's monster by battle, your opponent skips their draw phase. 
We're talking about that Fenrir. It's Doggy Yada. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I, like you, like we have four different cards with Fenrir in the name. Because we have that, we have the original, you know, that Fenrir. We have Carta, uh, was it Kashatira Fenrir? Um, Nordic, uh, Nordics have a Fenrir, and I think there's like one other. Like there's 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 too many cards with Fenrir in the name now. Um, actually, yeah, I think you called it. Okay, there's five cards with Fenrir in the name. Fenrir, Fenrir oh. the Nordic Wolf, Glepnir, the Fetters of Fenrir, which is the trap card. Um, the Kashira Fenrir and SZW Fenrir Sword. Oh. There's five. I mean, if you want That's... to count the trap card, yeah, but otherwise you're on the ball. I doubt you would know what SZW Fenrir sword is. I mean, if you're gonna, if I'm gonna be completely honest, there's that's four too many cards with the name Fenrir in the name. I'm okay with the Nordic one, cause like the the trap has like lore with the monster. Do you know what the monster does? I do not. So Nordics are fa like have some of the worst cards in the game. Two of which basically do the same thing. One of them is level 10, 4,000 attack. One of them is level 8, 3,000 attack, but they do the same thing, okay? During your main phase two, if an AC or monster is on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand to your opponent's side of the field. End of head position. Right. That, that sounds terrible. If an ACR monster is not on the field, destroy this card. At the start of your battle phase, change so the the person who owns it. Change all defense position monsters to control the face of attack, and both players take battle damage of owning this card. Now keep what mind What card is this? Fenrir the Nordic Wolf. There's also like a level oh. eight dragon version of this as well. Okay. So you give your opponent the 4,000 attack point monster, and its effect changes all defense position monsters you control to attack. So Jeez. you give them a level 10 with 4,000 attack, or a level 8 with 3,000, and they're both dark. And then you just have to sit there and hope to God they don't remove them, because I'm pretty sure, let me see. Um, there's another, the other one does something fancy, I think. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of thought it was weird with, uh, Nordics, the fact that, you know, they have, like, Thunder, Thor, or they have, uh, what is it, uh, Loki, Thor, and Odin, mm -hmm. and all of them require, like, different specific tuner, uh, tuners. So, I always thought, like, I don't know, I always kind of thought it was weird how, basically, the deck couldn't, you know, actually play all three. You had to specifically build to cater to one of the three synchros. Yeah, um, Nordics are three archetypes in a trench coat. Actually, no, they're four because the synchros are all their own archetype. There's the Nordics, right? And then there's yep. the Ice Seer. But wait, that's when you're mistaken because there's more than just those three. There are, in fact, the. Althar, which are like Loki's, the Nordic Beasts, which are Thor's, and the Nordic Ascents, Ascendant? Yeah, Ascendants, which are the for Odin. So each one yeah. is its own, like, mini archetype. And let me see. Oh, here, I have found the level 8. So the level 8, if this face-up defense position card you control is changed to attack, you take 3,000 damage. So you give your opponent a 4,000 and a 3,000, and hopefully they don't get rid of them, go to their battle phase, and are forced to take 3,000 damage. This effect can only be used once while face up on the field, just so you know. Still, jeez, man. <laughs> like, 
You're giving them the cards. It's still. Uh, it... <clears throat> I don't know. I I I still think Nordics are just kind of weird. Like they're just they're just whole thing. All weird. I'm pretty sure that the car that just showed up lets you give give your opponent a Nordic monster. Huh. Like Nord, uh, dude. You know what the Link monster does, right? Um. Actually. No, I don't, because I, I did not read it. So, Nordics, um, they got more support recently, so they can actually do things now. But their Link Monster, when it just came out, was the epitome of killing a deck. When this car, Basically, once this Link Monster came out, there was no other way to play the deck except for this specific way. Because there's no other reason except playing the Link version. Which is, their Link 1 requires a level of 5 or lower Nordic. If it's Link, Sum Link Summon, you can banish up to 3 cards from your hand and or field and specials that many Nordic monsters from your deck in defense position. And for the rest of this turn, you cannot special summon monsters except Icier, summon, uh, icier Monsters, nor normal summon, except, uh, normal summon or Set Any Monsters. You can only use this card uh, like once per turn. And while this points to an ACR monster, your opponent cannot target that monster with card effects. Also, your opponent cannot target this card for attacks. So, you drop it on the board. You normal drop. Rip three cards from somewhere. Possibly it. Possibly from your hand. Summon three, um, like, Nordics. Clap them together into, uh, into Odin and pass. I'm not gonna lie, that sounds like a pretty bit, a pretty bad game plan right there. Oh no, it's absolutely horrendous. And think about that, that, that was their best strategy for a long time. And then uh Battles of Chaos came out and they got a couple a uh, couple new cards. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you, I haven't played with their new cards, so I'm not gonna sit here and act like everything's all fancy dancy with it. I haven't even bothered touching it. I'm not gonna lie, I pulled a couple. Oh but my God, I, spell. I told myself I wasn't gonna touch Nordics. I'm looking at their field spell. Nordic monsters cannot be destroyed by battle. If this card is destroyed, destroy all Nordic monsters on the fields. What, bro? That's so bad. It's so terrible. There's one worse than this. I swear to God, it's in here somewhere. You know, I'm not gonna lie. We're 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 gonna get like so much hate from the horde, the the Nordic community for this. Oh, here, here, it's called Odin's Eye. Once per turn during each player's standby phase, target one Icer you control until the end of this turn. And if you do, look at all cards in your opponent's hand and all cards set cards they control. Well, I mean, I guess the cool thing is you get full knowledge of your opponent's hand and everything. You have to hurt your own board. I mean, yeah, but but the knowledge, though, Let's see, there's it's pretty deal. bad. Oh, no, pretty, here it is. pretty here it is. freaking bad. It. This one's even worse. This is the worst oh, one. No. Target one oh, I no. you control. Give that monster to your opponent. That, that's it? No, no, no. During your opponent's next end phase, destroy that monster and banish all cards your opponent controls. Uh -huh. So... You know, it, at least it's not just give your opponent two battle phases. That's give your opponent 4,000 attack. You're just... Just for context, the way you actually have to play the deck right now, you basically summon Odin and play me something else. You're just giving them everything and then passing. Sound, I mean, it's, it's it just sounds so bad. Want to hear their new card? Oh, God. Their newest card, one, well, one of the new cards... Straight up, the first effect. Special summon one Nordic from the deck. 
Okay, that's actually good and going somewhere. It locks you into ice ear monsters, but th that's just oh. comparing to what they used to have to work with, with shit like Gader Damrung. And then they have what is, like, I'm not even going to bother pronouncing this one. I'm going to make up a word. Nordic Relic Hilda. Hilda's, like, unscrambled in there. Special summon a Nordic from the deck. From the deck. Cannot special summon monsters from extra except Ice Ear monsters. While that monster is on the field. So if you get rid of that monster, you can go back to using it. You can banish this card from your graveyard, add one Nordic from deck to hand, and then shuffle one card from your deck to your hand. You can only use one effect per turn. Alone. Everything on that card is good. That card is Itali, and it turns Burial Goods into Rota. Everything on that is good. And then you compare it to the fucking sink. You need a card that good to make Odin. <laughs> Do you know what Odin does? No. I do not. Until the end of your turn, you can make it unaffected by spells and traps. Is that all he does? Well, that's all of them have one main effect. Um, they all have the same effect, I believe, towards the end of it. But Odin's main effect, once per turn, make this card unaffected by spells and traps until the end of the turn. Um, Thor, negate the effects of all monsters your opponent currently controls until the end phase, which is good. But he has 500 less attack than Odin. And Loki, once per turn, when your opponent activates a spell... Or, wait, once per turn, when your opponent activates a spell or trap during your battle phase, negate the activation and if you do destroy it. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I think Thor sounds like he's probably the best one. Yeah, th like, Thor is, are, is the best one of the three. Let's see here. Um, Odin's second effect. Once per turn during the end phase, if this face up card was the squirt was destroyed by your opponent's card, it's sent to the graveyard. Banish one Nordic ascent from grave special summon this and if you special it, draw one. Um Alright, and then Thor's the same effect, but with a Nordic piece, eight hundred damage. And Loki, same thing with an Alfar. Um uh, special and then at target one trap and grave and add it to your hand. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, Loki had a good recycle effect. Odin's just got attack. I, I, I feel so bad for Nordic players because, you know, this is this is the garbage they got. And here's one of... So this came out after they released the support for Nordics. The, the, the Link Monster. And those remember those, like, decks that they came pre-built, like Dark Magician something and Nordics? Oh, yeah, I remember those. It came, the, I remember it came... Nordics. It came... It came with, uh, what was it, Nordics, uh, Heroes, and um, what was the Phantom, Phantom Knights? Um, it was one of those, I think. But this one came out the set after that. I remember because Steven opened it up, was trying to find it. He's like, where's the green one? Because the green one's the best one. It's a Nordic Alfar, you know, for, for um, uh, Loki. If this card is banished by a link, Nordic Link monster, you can send to the graveyard one Nordic you control and two and two Nordic from your deck whose levels total equal ten. Special summon one Ice Ear from your extra deck. Oh. So basically, if you banish this with the girl, she can summon something out of the deck. He will then target that thing on the field. And foolish too, and basically a really roundabout way of making one of the Nordic synchros without murdering your hand. I mean, still, that's it. Still, just sounds ridiculous. Oh yes, especially because you you already heard what I like, they're summoning, but it has one yeah. extra. Effect. It has a second effect. If an ice oh, you control uh, uh, in your possession is sent to the grave by an opponent's uh, except by battle, except by battle. Banish this card from your graveyard and special summon one Icier from your extra deck with a different name from the cards in your grave. Wow. This card is the only reason you run two different, like, um, Nordics. Unless you want to have fun. Wait, I'm not gonna lie. I still, I still think the deck just sounds pretty bad. Oh, no, it does. Did you know Loki has a top? Yeah. No, Loki was played in an extra deck. 
um, in a top deck a few, like a year ago or two. Oh. Oh, you meant like that. No, it has a top event. It has won an event. You want to know why? Why? It was in Mystic Mind. You know, I'm not going to lie. I mean, Time Wizard has has a top because, you know, or, oh, yeah, Time Wizard does. Somebody, like, side decked a copy as a joke. Yeah, they played it in the extra deck exclusively to... Um, banish it off a pot of extravagance. In reality, it could have been anything, and it would not have mattered. Yeah. It's kind of crazy amount of cards that have tops exclusively because of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's it's really insane. Um, I'm, I'm still just surprised that Norics are just that bad, though. Crazy, isn't it? Like, like, why? Why do they gotta be so bad? And I remember wanting to yeah. build them, and it was like actually sad. Like, I think they're, I think it's a, they're, they're a cool concept and idea. It's just they're executed so terribly. Well, the thing about them is they were supposed to be rivals to the Egyptian god cards. I mean, I wait. Were they really supposed to be rivals? They were marketed as like counterparts to the Egyptian gods, to the point where Those... I had a packet from a structure deck that I had bought comparing them: the trickster, the powerhouse, the leader, shit like that. Comparing the Egyptian gods to the um, Nordics, which is why I wanted them because it reminded me of that packet that I had bought when I was a child. Wow. That's just... Isn't that crazy? Wow. I I don't even know what to think. I, uh... I never... I never ever thought of them like that. So, here's how I would like, fix not the even once. I'd give them a good boss monster. And that's it. You know, you know, you you know what the you you know I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. I think the boss monster, um, if it gets destroyed, should be able to basically just summon out one of the other synchros from the extra deck. The amount of things in th- there are six cards in Yu-Gi-Oh that mention Ragnarok. Only one of them. Is a fucking um, Nordic card. Ragnarok is like the end of like one of their main stories when they after they kill Odin and like the apocalypse starts. Yeah. They like they could just like make actual cards for the deck. They have great extenders. Like they have great cards. They just don't have an end game. Which really does suck. I feel like it's a uh, very much a wasted potential. Oh yeah. Since we're on the topic of, like, absolutely ass cards, Gishki has one of the worst cards in the game. So, you know, Gishki, you know how they have, like, some of the best cards ever? Yeah, like Gus Kraken. Oh, yeah. Gishki, to this day, is still playable to some degree. And not, uh, they didn't even have support coming out, which, like, is broken. But yeah, and then I'm also not going to do uh, Gishki, uh, what you call it, uh, Gishki Splite's already a thing in the OCG. Oh yeah, I already bought Gishki, I'm prepared for it. This man. Listen man, Gishki have the worst normal summon in the game, and you could not prove me otherwise. I was going to say, I already, you already know I got my place at Gus Krakens, I'm ready to do some crap. Gishki Reliever. When this card is normal summoned or flip summoned, you can target one other you, monster you control and return it to the hand. You must control a Gishki to activate this effect. Yeah, that that is pretty bad. Well, here's the funny part: is this like if you did not include the like the last part of the effect, you couldn't activate the first one because it specifies other monster. So there's just extra text on the card for no reason because no one bothered. Jeez. I still think Gishkis are actually. I still think Gishkis are pretty cool, though. They're kind of. I, I. 
Ichis are a beautiful archetype. They're a very good example of, like, just artwork. I, I feel like, and, like, I know, I know Necroz was, like, the first ritual deck and probably the only ritual deck to ever be, you know, basically relevant. But one of the things I do like about Gishkis is the fact that there's, like, no once per turn on these cards. And I've heard, a, like, a couple... I, I, when when talk to, talking about uh, talking about a couple people, um, you know, with the whole Gus Kraken loop bullshit, um, which honestly is, like, the best thing the deck really has going for. And now that Gus Kraken's back at three, like, holy shit. Um... A couple people are trying to say that they're basically like Necroz before Necroz, and I'm like, I understand what they're saying, but like, I don't think it's completely true though. Well, they both because kind of Geesh... did two different things, I reckon. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing was Necroz was just insanely powerful, but the thing is, gut like the thing is with uh, Geeshkies, their best thing was basically just you know hand ripping. And even when Gus Kraken was at one, you know, it still was possible to, like, rip, I think, like, two or three out of your opponent's hand. But, you know, it was it was just harder to do. So, I'm, you know, nobody likes Rituals, so nobody's going to play it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't know. I never really like summoning mechanics. I just like specific kinds of decks and the summoning mechanics, if that makes sense. I get you. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Back in the day, you remember I really, really did like fusion decks, and I, I still kind of like fusion decks. Um, I think fusions is probably like my favorite mechanic as far as like gameplay goes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm not, and like fusions, obviously not the best. Um, I'd say probably the best is honestly at this point. Pro, uh, I'd say like links or like XCs. They're both pretty. I feel like just about on par as far as being the easiest summoning mechanic and probably the best one, but like I just I love the fusion mechanic. I remember for but... a while I was playing Synchros. I think I kind of grew out of that, but I think so far my favorite deck to play wise is definitely Branded. Um, Despia Branded specifically. Um, let's go Branded. I really like the deck. It's fun. It's, you, you, it's a fun deck. You, you, you let, let's be real. They're real here. The real reason why you like it is because you get to have fun and basically make a pun of your name. Yes. Let's go, Brit. Listen, that's be a Brandon. Let's go. Oh, man. Oh, so a joke on, uh, like, on political, like, internet stuff makes when I, Whenever... Whenever like Joe Biden does something like really that like, makes like people angry, they call him Dark Brandon. <laughs> oh no! So the deck's literally Dark Brandon. <laughs> oh no! Well, I'm not gonna lie. I think I think this might actually be a, a pretty decent point um, to end on because uh, we both we both know that. Uh, I got to work early, early shifts at the hospital in the morning, so. So. You, we got to go back to being adults after we hang out. I know, sadness. So, uh, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to episode two of, you know, the podcast. Uh, today's episode was on, you know, start out being on, you know, basically some cards that we really, really liked and. You know, we, we managed to keep it mostly on Yu-Gi-Oh! today, so that's all cool. So, everybody, we'll see y'all in the next video, and, you know, we'll both be here for another episode of the podcast sometime soon, you know. We're thinking, what, probably like a weekly to bi-weekly basis? Is that, is that what we're thinking? I'm not going to lie. I have a fun of these. I do them every day if you wanted, but I think a week is a good balance. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just something like not, it's, it's something that, you know, it's, it's content that we can, you know, we can, we, we, we could easily do probably like, you know, good, like once a week or something, um, you know, cause we, we do have some time in our schedules where, you know, we're able to sit down and do this. So, 
Yeah, just uh, for context for the audience, all the shitty meme videos, I do them by myself after work at midnight. <laughs> yeah, we. It's just you know, adulting sucks, guys. But uh, we all kind of have. We all have to do it at some point. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, we kind of don't really want to quit doing the channel. So, also, this is just uh, something that. Shout out, huh? wonder, shout out to our wonderful fan base. We are almost to 500 subscribers. You better get that number up. I need a reason to drink. <laughs> yeah, guys, we're almost to 500 subscribers. So if you know if we get there, you know we'll we'll we'll, we'll do something. But uh, thank you guys for uh, really just tuning in and you know being subscribed. We we really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see. We'll we'll both see you guys in the next podcast. All right. Catch you later, guys.